What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to do a new video where I'm going to talk about the history of my life through video games and the consoles I owned. So let's get straight into it. Welcome to a new video, so with a kind of focus change on my channel, I've been trying to integrate more video game content into this channel uh, and steer away from solely just Funko Pops, which is where I sort of ended up going. It was always about more than Funko Pops, my channel and all the stuff I love. So I want to introduce a new series where I talk about all the games that you really should play before you die type thing. Um, there's a lot of games to go through, games that I've played throughout my life. So I thought with an introduction to that, I wanted to make a video where I just talk about my life through the consoles that I own. So my, my video gaming life, and what consoles I owned and, and so I just mention a couple of games that I liked on each system without going into much detail because I will make videos about each game more than likely. So yeah, so basically back in the late 80s, uh, my dad got me an Amiga 500, a uh, Commodore Amiga 500 uh, microcomputer. Microcomputers were massive in the UK. Uh, Nintendo wasn't really very big over here. Uh, Sega Master System did really well. So Sega Master System and microcomputers like the Spectrum, uh, the ZX Spectrum, the Amstrads, the Commodores like the Commodore 64 and the uh, Commodore Amiga and you had the Atari ST were very, very popular. I had the Amiga 500, that's what my dad bought for me, uh, and I absolutely loved that computer and some of the games on that, that computer were, were, were absolutely amazing to me at the time. Uh, some of the games, uh, Shadow of the Beast, I actually have a copy of Shadow of the Beast, I have it on the Mega Drive, but um, I, had it, I haven't got the Amiga copy anymore, but I had it on the Amiga, it was one of the best games I played. Uh, the Monkey Island games were, were fantastic, uh, Syndicate, another great game. Uh, Alien Breed, uh, the Dizzy series, it was like a platforming game on the, on the Amiga, uh, Treasure Island, Dizzy, Fantasy Land, Dizzy, or Fantasy World Dizzy, can't remember that one. Um, those, those games were fantastic, uh, the Chaos Engine was great, um, what else? Zool, another platforming game, it was a game I played a lot. Uh, and also on the Amiga 500 it was my first experience of Street Fighter, Street Fighter is one of my most favourite gaming franchises up to now and my dad bought me Street Fighter 1 I was massively let down by that I was like because I'd seen Street Fighter 2 in the magazines and that and then Street Fighter 1 was really not very good uh, but I did eventually get Street Fighter 2 on the Amiga and it wasn't very good because you only had the one button on the joystick it was really difficult to do fireball moves so all I did was be Honda and smash the buttons with a hundred hand slap. That was about my limits of my ability on the Amiga version game. But yeah, so the Amiga 500 was the very first computer I had. Then I wanted to get a console and all my friends had um, Sega Mega Drives. A few of them had Nintendo, Super Nintendo, but I, I really wanted the Sega Mega Drive. And I really wanted the Sega Mega Drive for this game, Splatterhouse 2. Um, at that time, early 90s, I was really into watching horror films because that's what kids sort of do and they, they would try and watch things they're not supposed to. And uh, yeah, I I loved Nightmare on Elm Street, but also Friday the 13th and obviously the, the character's sort of similarity to Jason from Friday the 13th was made me want to get that game. But not only that, the game itself is very good and it's definitely one of my favourite games I've ever played. Other games like system that that I loved was like Streets of Rage 2 was the one of the big big games in that system that I loved, and the X Men game, uh, I that was phenomenal and I spent so many hours on that game. And there's a lot of other games on that 
console that I love, but again, I'm not going to get too much into games on this video because I want to do that in separate videos for each game. Okay, so whilst having a Sega Mega Drive, I also uh, got a Game Boy. So my first experience of having a Nintendo console was a handheld and it was the Game Boy. The Game Boy was very popular in the early 90s in the UK. Uh, it was a bit of a late bloomer over here. I think in the US they'd had it quite a lot longer than us. Uh, we got it quite late and eventually when I got around to getting a Game Boy, I did like the Game Boy. I had Super Mario Land, my first experience of owning and playing a Mario game. Uh, Mega Man on the Game Boy, I, my first experience of Mega Man. And I loved it. I absolutely loved that game. I spent so many hours because of how tough the Mega Man game was, the amount of hours I just played in the car. Every car journey I took my Game Boy, I played Mega Man, and it was just great to me. But I just, it was just the, the yellow, black, and white. I just, as a kid, I wanted more. So there was a kid across the, lived across the road from us, and he, he really wanted a Game Boy. He had a Sega Game Gear, so me and my brother, because we sort of jointly uh, shared the Game Boy, we decided to swap the Game Boy with a few games with the boy across the road for a Sega Game Gear which had a Master System converter and a load of Game Gear games and Game Boy games. And that was a great trade in all honesty at the time it was. And uh, yeah, we had a load, we got a load of games for that Game Gear. Um, but my favourite game on that console was Sonic Chaos, which is a, a, a Sonic game I don't really think ever gets mentioned very much. But I absolutely loved it and I probably liked that the most out of any Sonic game that has ever been made. Uh, so yeah, Sonic Chaos and Columns. I played a lot of Columns on that console. I don't know why, I really loved Columns over Tetris. I don't know why, but yeah. I played a lot of Columns on the Game Gear. Okay, so moving on, I then got a Mega CD, or a Sega CD as you call it, called it in the US. Uh, I don't know why I really wanted a Mega CD, but I just, I just, it was the idea of the CDs, I guess. At the time, CDs was a new format for video games. And some of the graphics in the games looked really good, but they were a little bit misleading, because a lot of them were like, you know, video actual like they'd filmed sections of it and it, it, it was a bit misleading but there was a couple of games on that system i really liked of course sonic cd i like that it's one of the, my favorite sonic games and also uh road blaster it was a really excellent game it was sort of like a you know just basically just had it was like a, a moving movie a bit like a a bit like dragon's lair a little bit but yeah you just had to like move right move it you chose what happened like an interactive movie, I guess. But I really enjoyed that game. And also Night Trap as well. A lot of you will know another one I really enjoyed. Okay, so then uh, a big thing happened in the video game industry. And it was the introduction of Sony into the race. Uh, and let's be honest, the PlayStation, I think, changed the video game industry in 1995. When it was released. 95, I believe. Um real the jump in in technology although the PlayStation now looks a lot of the games look really bad now it hasn't aged very well a lot of the games it really was a big jump from what we had to that to that console and and, and the PlayStation changed some of the games that come out on that console were phenomenal and I'm gonna make a video purely on the on those sort of couple of years 96 and 97 some of the games that come out in that that time period were immense, but some of the best games on the console we'll quickly just talk about. Resident Evil, I've mentioned before on the channel, one of my favourite ever games. Uh, Silent Hill, Final Fantasy VII, Metal Gear Solid, uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, one of my all-time favourite games, Legacy of Kane, Blood Omen. Some phenomenal games, and there's way more on that console to talk about, but we're not going to. And of course, PlayStation was a big part of my teenage years. Okay, so after PlayStation, um, I didn't get an N64, I passed out, I didn't get a Sega Saturn, I passed that up. Uh, I mean, I was a kid, I didn't have money to burn, I couldn't, I couldn't have every console I wanted, so I had PlayStation, I was happy with that. But then the Sega Dreamcast came out in uh, 2000, late 99, 2000 time. I was at college, and I just got a part-time job, and spent my money, first lot of wages, I got a Dreamcast. And again, for me, the jump, the jump in technology from PlayStation to Dreamcast was phenomenal. And Dreamcast was one of my favourite ever consoles. And it's so disappointing that they it didn't do well. It was just down to bad timing, I believe. Um, but the Dreamcast was fantastic. Uh, with Ready to Rumble, the boxing game that came out with it, with it at launch, uh, I really enjoyed that game. Uh, but the big games for me were Crazy Taxi. Loved that game. 
spent so many hours. I bunked off college a lot to play that game, which was bad. Uh, but I, I just, it's such a good game. I loved it with an Offspring soundtrack, which if you now um, download that game on like Xbox Live or something like that, they've taken away all the product placement like KFC and Pizza Hut and they've also removed the Offspring soundtrack but the big part of that game for me was the Offspring soundtrack it was it was fantastic uh, but yeah obviously Shenmue games Shenmue 1 Shenmue 2 fantastic but House of the Dead 2 as well with the gun I bought the gun pack um, excellent game Power Stone there's many many games again I don't want to go through too many of the games this video will take forever but so many good games on that console and lots to talk about for that but yeah that is one of my favourite consoles I've ever owned Okay, so obviously the PlayStation 2 came out, which kind of cemented the death of the Dreamcast. And I mean, there's no denying the PlayStation 2 is a good co is a good console. Lots of great games on that console. Uh, it was, I think, the, it's the best-selling console, one of the best-selling consoles ever. It was a good console, it's, but it's not. It doesn't hold this special place in my heart like some other consoles do. There's a great catalogue of games on that console. You know, with the first introduction of like, the 3D Grand Theft Auto games and Vice City was, of course, my favourite. I mean, the 80s sort of scenario was, was, was very appealing on that game. It was a good, good game, that one. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, that was a phenomenal game. Absolutely unbelievable. The God of War franchise was born on the PlayStation 2. God of War 1, very, very good game. Very groundbreaking. Loved it. Uh, and another game series that I, I I found a real love for on that console was Burnout. Not Burnout 1, not Burnout 2, when Acclaim made them. Burnout 3 Takedown, a phenomenal game. I absolutely love it. So many hours were wasted on that game. Oh, I say wasted, I enjoyed myself. But it's just a fantastic, fantastic game. So whilst owning a PlayStation 2, the Xbox came out. So Microsoft jumped into the, to the console war and I just decided to, to grab myself one. Um, I like the look of Halo, it looked interesting to me, so I, I bought, bought one. And you know, the big standout games on that console were, would be for me Halo, Halo 2, and Ninja Gaiden. Um, they were really good games. I don't hold a massive dear love for the, the console as a whole, nothing really stands out massively to me that was exclusive to that console. Um, but those three games were the ones for me that made me sort of get it. Uh, I then also, this is one of the only times I think I ever owned all three consoles at the time that were like the main three. I bought a GameCube. Uh, I basically only bought a GameCube because Resident Evil was one of my, my favourite all time games. And I always bought every Resident Evil game that come out. And for a time, Capcom made an agreement with Nintendo that the Resident Evil games would be. Uh, exclusive to the GameCube. So we got first and foremost uh, Resident Evil, the uh, the remake of Resident Evil 1, which was really good, really good remake. Uh, we got uh, Resident Evil 0, which uh, it was a decent game, not bad. And then Resident Evil 4, where the franchise of Resident Evil really took a turn. Some would argue a turn for the worst. Resident Evil 4 as itself is a good game. It's a good standout game in its own right. But then after that, five, six, and seven, I mean, seven, right, seven's pretty good actually, but six and, uh, five and six were really, really not good in the Resident Evil franchise. And the franchise took a turn for the worse in my eyes after Resident Evil 4. But yeah, so I had a GameCube, and I didn't buy the GameCube for Nintendo exclusives. And while I owned that GameCube, I never owned a Mario game, I never owned an, uh, a Zelda game. I just, I'd never been into them, I never found this need to want to play them. But I did have Smash Brothers on the GameCube, and that was a that was a fantastic game. And F Zero was the other game, which was a Nintendo game that I bought on that console. F Zero was really good on the GameCube too. Okay, so as that generation ended, I then moved into the next generation and got an Xbox 360. So at that time, I had no love for Xbox. The Xbox wasn't it wasn't amazing to me that original console. I was firmly I you probably say a PlayStation. I was. I, PlayStation was my favourite. I favoured PlayStation over any of the consoles at the time. So when the 360 came out, because that beat the PS3 out to release, I went and got an Xbox 360 on the day of launch, very early morning, and traded in my old Xbox and all the games I had for that, and a load of PlayStation games and stuff like that. Traded that all in to get the Xbox 360. I got the game Condemned on release, 
and a couple of other launch titles, but mainly Condemned, and that was was a really good game. The Xbox 360 has probably eaten up the majority of my my video game playing career, and although not deemed really retro at this time. I have very fond memories of the Xbox 360 between my early to mid 20s till my uh, just before I was 30 was I was playing Xbox 360 all the time. I, I accumulated quite a large game score playing that console. Uh, some of the big games for that console that are, are, are among my favourite games I've ever played. Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Uh, that came out about six months after release of the 360. I bought the console based on that, looking at that game, and it looked amazing. It was supposed to come out at launch, but it didn't. It came out six months later. But when that game came out, I played no other game for months. And I hadn't done that for a long time. The last game I'd done that with was Final Fantasy VII, but I was a kid, and when you're a kid, you can't buy games as much as you like. But I was working, I had my own job, I could pretty much you know, buy games when I wanted. Elder Scrolls Oblivion, Definitely up there is one of my favourite all-time games. Of course, Elder Scrolls Skyrim is is brilliant. It's the new game, the newest game in the franchise, and it's brilliant. But I just there's something about Oblivion that I love so much. It's the varying in colours, the varying in the areas in the game, in Cyrodiil, and it's just so much variety in that game. You can become a werewolf, you can become a, a vampire. You just do all kind. I just love that game. So many good memories of that game. Uh, where do I have it here? Yeah, there it is, and I've got the special edition there. Such a great game, Oblivion. Um, and, yeah, one of my all-time favourite games. But also, other games on that console, the big games, probably Red Dead Redemption, such a great game. Dead Rising as well, They've got the Steelbook version, such a great game, got this the day that was released. It was, it was phenomenal, I'd never seen so many zombies on screen at once. The effect again, it's a, a great franchise uh, of, ga of games. The original trilogy is good, um, it doesn't end great, but you know, it was such a good game. Re Mass Effect 1 and 2 were, were brilliant games. So, like I said, I've become a bit of an Xbox fanboy at that point. I, I, I really wasn't a fan of PlayStation anymore, and I've become a bit of a fanboy, which I don't like to be. I, I don't like to be a fanboy, but I couldn't afford to ha have both consoles really. But then Metal Gear Solid. Four was going to be released and it only came out on PlayStation 3. So I had to buy a PlayStation 3. I got that. I owned a PlayStation 3 for about a month. Played Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. Fantastic game. One, among one of the best in the franchise. Again, I think I really enjoyed it. And then I also played uh, Uncharted 1 and 2. Uh, yeah, they, they, were, they were good. They are good. They are really good games. But they didn't grab me. So I sold the PS3 about a month later. Towards the end of the Xbox 360's life cycle, the Xbox One come out. I uh, since had my son Raiden, and so therefore gaming took a back seat. I stopped playing games pretty much entirely. Uh, I couldn't go and buy an Xbox One or any any of them, the new consoles really at the time, and I didn't really have the time to play it because I, amongst working, I was looking after Raiden on my days off. So, you know, that took a back burner. As he got a bit older and he was having naps and things like that, I decided to go and get an Xbox One because having the 360 with the natural progression as I built up such a game score and all my friends that I played with online were on Xbox, I went and got an Xbox One. Uh, Dead Rising 3 was a good game on the Xbox One and launch. Uh, and then Metal Gear Solid 5, Fan of Pain's come out, that was that has been a good game playing on that. Resident Evil 7. Uh, but the exclusives haven't been great on the Xbox One. And in all honesty, the last year or two, I've been feeling a real sort of dislike for modern gaming and a real sort of just felt, just, oh, just did not, I just don't like modern gaming. I just fell out of love with gaming to a degree. That's why I went back looking at my more retro games and collecting retro games on my, on my uh, Retron 5. I have one of those and I've been playing the retro, retro games. Uh, you know, they a little. Xbox has grabbed a couple of exclusives that have been pretty decent as of late. Cuphead is a great game, taking the world by storm almost. And Sea of Thieves has been pretty good exclusive. Um, I know they've got Crackdown 3 coming out later this year, but I lost, I've lost love with the Xbox. I've, I don't know what they're doing, and, and I lost a little love of modern gaming. So um, I then got a Wii U for, for a little while. I, I don't know why. I, I just I'd seen adverts for it. I I really really got off Nintendo with the Wii the whole Wii 
I didn't like the Wii at all. Mainly because it just catered towards casual gaming people, and I didn't, I didn't like that all the sort of rubbish they brought out on that Wii console and the motion controls. The Wii U looked really good. They had the new Mario Brothers game, the 2D platforming, and I've always liked the Mario 2D platforming games. And Mario 64, I never had a 64. I never played, so I, um, yeah, I didn't, didn't really ever get a love of, of a 3D Mario game. So a 2D Mario game come out, I thought, yeah, let's get this Wii U. So I got the Wii U, Super Mario Brothers, new Super Mario Brothers was, was, was really good, and I bought a couple other different games on it. Bayonetta 2 only come out on that, um, and Smash Brothers got that. But other than that, I didn't really, I don't know, it, it just sort of collected dust and I didn't play it, so I, I did sell it in the end. Um, now recently, the Switch has come out and uh, I watched a lot of YouTube videos on it and stuff like that and see people what they're saying about it and it looked really cool so I, I, I did get myself a Switch. Um, Zelda Breath of the Wild I've found has is, been phenomenal to play, I've really enjoyed that, not really ever playing Zelda games. And Super Mario Odyssey, uh, my son Raiden has got an absolute love for it and one of the best things I've ever bought I think, but, you know, I've enjoyed playing it with him. Something I've always wanted to do when having a son. But yeah, I've really enjoyed that, that game, Mario Odyssey 2. So that leads us up right up to now, and I've just bought a PS4, and at the moment I've got God of War. Leave. My. Home. You. Are going to have to kill me for that to happen. And I've absolutely been loving that game. It's absolutely fantastic. And yeah, so PS4 has actually kind of rejuvenated my love of gaming at the moment. Uh, some of the exclusive titles on that console, there's so many that I've missed that I can go pick up cheap now. So I'm going to work my way through the catalogue of games on the PS4. And I found that God of War, in all honesty, has reignited my love of games at the moment. So I'm really into it at the moment. So that's my history in gaming, guys, that, to a degree. It's the consoles I've owned and the games on those consoles I've enjoyed very briefly talked about there, the games. Okay guys, thanks for watching uh, this quite long video. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a like. Please leave some comments in the comment section below. Uh, if you like about anything console and video game related, uh, let me know what consoles you owned and one of your, what your favorite consoles were. And if you haven't already guys, please subscribe to the channel for more gaming content as well as other collectibles and nerdy stuff. Okay, thanks for watching guys, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take it easy.